Can you show us a 1099 consolidated? Ah, oh, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the 1099 consolidated is just going to have, like, several informations on there. I don't have, like, a redacted one. If you want to hang on for a second, maybe I can stay on a little longer and kind of show you that. I'll kind of quickly redact one and then show you. But it'll have, like, what? Dividend income, interest income, and then, like, stock sales-ish on there, okay? And there might be some other things as well, but... Those are generally what I see. Give me a minute. I'll redact one of these, okay? And I'll show you how to do this 1099 consolidated, all right? If you have any, like, specific questions on that 1099, let me know. Like, if you're stuck on something, I will help you out. But it, it's, these things are pretty straightforward for the most part. I mean, I know I always say that because I do this stuff, like, day in and day out. But um, I do get it. Tax is its own language, and... Learning a new language is never easy. Okay, so here's like a 1099 consolidated one, right? And yours should look something similar to this, okay? I know it does say 22, but hey, it should be the same regardless of the year. All right, we'll have a, a section that has like, right? Like I said, 1099 div, this is dividends they earned. There's interest income here. And I think usually this is like the big meat and potatoes, but on this one, it's not that big, is the 1099B section. This is like stock sales that were done. Okay, so let's get right into this. Here we go. Wages and income is where this thing would be. We'll go to add edit. So investment and savings. There we go. All right, so this is it. We're just going to have to put this in kind of like one by one, 1099 interest, right? So that's essentially what we're doing here, right? We have a 1099B. We have a 1099 div and the INT. So we're just going to kind of go through this one by one is really what it is. So here's 1099 INT. Right, we would just hit, uh, can we just do like add new? There's review, there's a new one here. Um, so, you know, you could do this and log in that way. I'm gonna do it a different way, right? Just kind of put it in myself. Hit continue, there's the interest. Um, type it in myself is what I'm gonna do, okay? So, essentially you'll see right here, the interest. <laughs> I mean, this doesn't even pop up on a return. If it's under a dollar, doesn't even rounds up and down off a dollar. So this wouldn't pop up, but I'll put it in there. Let's say we got a, you know, five dollars here is where that would go. All right. Hit continue just so we can at least see something pop up here. None of these uncommon situations apply to me. Okay. And there it is. That should be it, hopefully. There you go. Okay. And then we go to the dividend section. Hit review. Go to our dividend section right here. This one's a little more complicated, a little more tricky. There's a couple more numbers we have to deal with here. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. Enter it in a different way. Dividends. Okay, continue. See what happens when I do this. Hmm. Consolidated. Boom. Whoops. Well, that didn't work. Like that. There we go. Okay, so payers information. Let's just say bank. Again, dividends. Wow, look at that. I did pretty good on kind of getting those, that information in there. So there it is, dividends, right? Um, let's do that split screen so we can kind of double check the work here. All right. Um, get rid of that. There it is. So, whoops. Ordinary dividends, right? 11.50. Qualified, 11.30. A total capital gain distribution. Um, the So this is capital gains off of the stocks that you are invested in. So like, like an ETF or an index fund is essentially buying and, and trading within itself. So there's some capital gains here is what this is. But it all looks good here. Look at, let's, let's make sure they got this one as well. Section 199A, which is what, box five. Yep, look at that. They got that as well. This is a deduction. This comes from, it's like a Trump tax law change, 20% you get. Obviously, in this case, not much, but you definitely want to make sure you're not missing that one there as well. Another one that is common that I do see a lot, which I don't see here, is foreign uh, tax paid. So if you have something like that, you make sure that that is also included right there because you can get a tax credit. It'll probably run you through the ringer of questions to do that, but you do want this as a tax credit, not as an itemized deduction, okay? So it'll be a lot better for you. Let's see here, okay? So there's that. That's essentially it. They got it all right here. Okay, Josie Martinez, if you have questions on this, let me know. And these uncommon situations apply, we'll say no. None of these do apply. Continue. Which exclusion percent do you see on your statement? Select all that apply. Hmm? 
Uh, there was none on my thing. <laughs> Go back. Why is it saying that? Our securities that didn't meet the holding requirements. We'll just say continue. Come on. There. There we go. Okay, deal. Got through that. And then the last one would be that capital gains, right? Add investments. It would be the 1099B that we have here. That would be this section right there. We've got to enter this in there. Okay? Again, 1099B is what that's called. So let's go here, enter it a different way. And we'll say we got the 1099B. There it is. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, stuff like that. Continue. All right, here we go. Let's enter it in. Account number doesn't matter. And tell us about your sales. Do these sales include employee stock? Oh, fun stuff, man. I have a whole video for something like this. This stuff is fun stuff, man. There's so many rules involved in stupid stuff like this. But I'm going to say for illustration purposes, no, we're not going to be doing this right now. Okay, If you do have something like this, make sure you, you search like my channel. I have actually a, like a really good video on this on how to do it within TurboTax. Okay, Very detailed video. Um, and I know a lot of these people that do get these types of things want to make sure that they are seeing the details through things like this. So be sure to check that out. Uh, do you have more than three sales on your 1099B? That's a good question. Um, I'm going to just say yes, we do. I know in this one we don't, but most people do. Do these sales include any other investments? We'll say like land collectibles. No, just stocks. Did you buy every investment listed or are they inherited? That's not common, but um, yeah, I'm going to say I did buy them all. Okay, continue. I mean, that does happen, but now choose how you enter those, right? I'm going to just do the sales section totals. That's what, generally what I do, and then you just kind of like upload, right? Look for your thing. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll show you how to do this. Deal, continue. Sales section. So here we go. So when we take a look at this thing, it's actually really important. Right? This is what that thing was telling us, right? Short term, so... This is like a sales section right here. Okay, so we're gonna enter this in as we see it. Short-term basis is reported. This is covered, right? So this was it saying right there. Oh, come on. Which basis is reported to the IRS, okay? So that's what it says right there. Deal, total proceeds, we'll just look right on over here. Total proceeds, 93. Boom, cost basis, what did you buy it for? 134.15, okay, do you need to adjust this? In this case, we're gonna say no, hopefully there is no wash loss, yeah, there is no wash loss. If there's a wash loss, you would have to adjust that, okay? So you would say, yeah, I need to adjust, and then you would say the wash loss, is like code W, there it is, non-deductible, boom. And you would put that total in there. But for my purposes, I'm not gonna be doing that, hit continue. So it's a loss, right? There you go. You can just double check that $40. There it is. Boom. Okay. And then you could just add another one, right? If we have like another common one would be like, let's say uh, this right here, right? Which is not reported. You could just do that as well. Not reported, right? Or if we have one of these long-term, this is also common, is reported. That would be another one, right? Long-term is, long-term basis, basis reported, right? There you go. So there's that. I'm going to hit back, but I don't have that. Let's see, continue. We're going to trash that one. Yes. Continue. Now we'll need to upload. Because you do them all kind of at once, like in this case, you have to upload a copy of this thing. So that, and it'll get filed with the actual return itself. So there we go. Just uploaded a copy. Boom. Done. Hopefully. There you go. There you go. There's your 1099 consolidated. So hopefully that answered your question there. Uh, I think that concludes my stream for the day. If, uh, again, you want to help help me with this stream, make sure I'm still going to be doing this like moving forward. Every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific time is when I'm going to start these things, do them for about an hour, kind of help out people's situations, or just go over some common ones that I see a lot. Make sure you click the link in the description below. Use that to uh, when you go ahead and buy TurboTax so I can get a little chunk of this change to, again, help support me in doing stuff like this. So I don't always have to just crank out tax returns for all my clients and I can help out a lot more people here.